Being tarred and feathered is a form of physical punishment in which the victim is stripped and has wood tar either poured or painted onto their skin before being rolled in feathers or having feathers thrown on them. It has typically been used extrajudiciously, the result of organized mob violence and vigilantism. Tarring and feathering was fairly common practice in the American colonies during the political upheaval in the decade preceding the Revolutionary War. The most famous victim was John Malcolm, a British tax collector who was tarred and feathered twice. The second time it was because he knocked a man unconscious with his cane when that man had the gall to make fun of him for getting tarred and feathered the first time. The first written record of the practice comes from Richard I's instructions to his navy during the 1189 Crusade, in which the shaving, tarring, and feathering of the top of the head was prescribed for thieves. There was a famous tarring and feathering of nuns and monks that took place at the hands of a German Protestant military leader in 1623, and in 1696, a British bailiff was tarred and feathered by the general populace when he attempted to arrest a debtor who was within the bounds of a legal sanctuary. Throughout the 1760s, it was used in North America to protest taxes. It dropped off in popularity after 1770, but the Tea Act of 1773 brought it back into fashion. Nearly all of the incidents from this time period were perpetrated by colonists on British loyalists, but the Brits were not above using it themselves on occasion. And in 1791, farmers used it again on American tax collectors just before the outbreak of the Whiskey Rebellion. A segregationist was tarred and feathered by a group of anti-segregationists in 1851. German Americans got tarred and feathered during the First World War for not supporting bond movements enough. And the November 27, 1906 edition of the Evening News of Ada, Oklahoma, reports that a vigilance committee consisting of four young married women from East Sandy, Pennsylvania, corrected the alleged evil conduct of their neighbor, Mrs. Hattie Lowry. The nature of her conduct is not specified. The women appeared at Mrs. Lowry's home in the open day and announced that she had been given a chance. Two women held Mrs. Lowry down, while the other two smeared her face with stove polish until it was completely covered. They then poured molasses over her head and emptied a feather pillow over the molasses. The women then marched the victim to a railroad camp tied at the wrists where 200 workmen stopped to watch. After parading Mrs. Lowry through the camp, the women tied her to a large box where she remained until a worker released her. Three of the women were arrested and given $10 fines. In 1912, a vocal anarchist was tarred and sagebrushed by vigilantes in the absence of feathers. The tactic was widely adopted by the Klan during the 1910s as part of their anti-union violence, and it was used by the IRA, typically on Irish women accused of having romantic relationships with British soldiers, but it was also used by a loyalist group in 2007 to punish some drug dealers in a community. And in June of 2020, multiple graves and memorials to Confederate soldiers at Crown Hill Cemetery in Indianapolis were tarred and feathered. The procedure was rarely fatal, with the intent being humiliation and pain.